My first unit in New Jersey, right at boot camp, and then my second unit was in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, they call it Station Vacation, a small boat search and rescue, law enforcement, and drug interdiction. This would be the best job in the world because there was always different every single day. There were never two days the same, except for washing floors. Uh, we would go out in the small boats and we'd wait for that SAR alarm to go off and when, uh, when it goes you just jump in the boat with your crew and you head out and um, usually you're searching for somebody. A gentleman that had been um, recovered, we had been searching for, for swimming and uh, he had drowned, grown up guy and it's shallow water but that's not typical and we found him um, uh, on, on a bridge you have like pilings underneath and uh, it was an awful thing to come across. When we pulled him up, because he was so bloated, your body doesn't, your body's not the same. And I helped and I didn't realize the skin, you go right through. <gasps> so th that's awful. And uh, I can still feel that to this day if I hold jello. But when I see him in my mind, his face is intact and his eyes are open looking at me. But his eyes were never open. They were kind of, but I see him as he was, even though I never met him. For anyone that hasn't um, done a recovery in their life or seen a dead person or seen a baby that drowned, things like that, you see a lot of that. And uh, people think that uh, the only veteran that has issues like that is a combat vet that was sitting in a foxhole. And that's not the case. That is not the case. And that that is so vital for people to understand because you're blown off. Just, mm, she wasn't in Iraq. She wasn't getting shot at. You know what? That doesn't matter. It's just as important what I did. It's a spoke of the wheel to make the entire world in the military work. Uh, 2002, I uh, had had a child and I became ill. So when it was time to go back to the service, I was not able to, I was medically outed. So that was a huge crush to me because this was my lifetime career. I was gonna go all the way through, become a warrant officer and stay in for the rest of my life, but I lost it. All of my friends, um, you eat, you sleep, you get dressed, you, you go to work together, you carpool, you, you practice at the range together, you, you do everything together. I lost it all poof, in the blink of an eye. I was diagnosed with lupus, which is an autoimmune disease and it affects all of your organs. And um, a lot of people have it when it's just their skin, which is um, uh, cosmetically bothers them, of course, but mine affected my joints, my muscles, um, and kidney failure was the first thing they found, which is how it ignited all the rest. This was a tough uh, change to, to my life. Uh, of course, it was unexpected. I had a new baby to raise. I was married at the time to a fellow Coastie, and um, his schedule was different than mine, and I needed a lot of help at the house, which made it very, very difficult. Um, I went to the, to the point where I couldn't even drive on my own. I couldn't lift cups on my own. I couldn't feed the baby. I, um, just holding a spoon was difficult to, to feed him. Pick him up was so painful. I couldn't just take him to the park. I was basically at home, stuck, living a life in uh, a thousand square feet. We chose to move to Maine in 2006. Now mind you, I had a two-year-old. I was supposed to have, she's still supposed to be in a crib. I lost that too, and um, we were homeless. He lost his career, I lost mine. We lost all our money. So we lived in a camper in my parents' yard. 
So really, I went from, I have college degrees, I've gone from an amazing career, I have a wonderful friends and, and a wonderful, I have good finances coming in, beautiful home we owned, a pool, I could go to the beach every day, gone. When I first started noticing that something was not right in my mind, I had gotten to a stoplight with my son in the back and um, the lights were, were, uh, were red and then all of a sudden it turned green and the cars were going by and you know on the other side and uh, all of a sudden I couldn't turn left, I couldn't push the gas, I was freaking out uh, and my mind just, I can't go, I'm scared, I'm scared, the baby's crying, I hear sirens from the fire truck and uh, is the SAR alarm going to go off, is where am I supposed to be right now? Well, why won't the baby stop crying? And I hurt so bad and uh, you know, everything, it, it's a culmination. Even um, uh, holding the steering wheel was hurting me at that, you know, everything and it just didn't stop. I, I would say it was a good three minutes that I was stuck there because the lights would change. And uh, finally I got home and I said to my husband, something's wrong, something is wrong. It's, I feel like something snapped, I'm not normal right now. On October 14th, I decided, you know what, this is it. I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I can't be in pain anymore. I can't see the dead bodies anymore. So I took a 22 rifle and I snuck it out the back bathroom window through, I broke the screen. And I told the family, I said, I gotta run out. We need bread for sandwiches. Okay, so uh, I went out and got the rifle that I'd put out and I drove in my minivan to the Veterans Memorial in Raymond. And I called the park, it's nighttime, and I called the crisis line. So I said, you know, I have gone through so much. I have gone through the VA. I am not being helped like I'm supposed to. They called the police. I didn't know. And um, now I'm thankful. At the time, I was not thankful. I was mad. So all of a sudden, woo, the sirens show up in the back, and I see two cop cars, and they're both aimed at a V to me, and my car is here. And they get out with their weapons drawn, and I just look. I'm like, ah, this is not what I want. This is not it. I'm doing this by myself. Leave me alone. So I just balanced the rifle, because it's a large rifle, it's not a handgun, and I pulled the trigger. I shot myself through the stomach. After the trigger was pulled, it just hurt like hell. <laughs> and I, I remember the cop coming to my right side and opened the door and he said, why did you do this? Why did you do this? You're so beautiful and you, what, you have children, you're in a minivan, what, what did you do? Why? And I said, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. He goes, I'm a Marine. I understand. I, I do understand. Please, you just need to stay with me. You know, and he held everything together. Thank God he did. I woke up in the hospital and I kind of looked around and I'm like, mm, this really doesn't look like heaven. <laughs> I am alive and I am mad because that's not what was supposed to happen. Now I'm still going to be no use to anybody with all these scars. I look down, I am, I look like Frankenstein now. So it's even worse. It's not the way it's supposed to be again. Damn it. What did I do wrong in my life? Apparently that was it. <laughs> now when this occurred, my parents were on a cruise and, uh, they couldn't come see me for a couple days either. They afterward, you know, after they saw my initially, my mom became a basket case. And I'm so sorry that I hurt them like that. But that's not what I wanted to do. I just couldn't. The, the walls that I saw, when you'd reach out, they would just crumble, crumble down. There was no way out. There was no way out. Eventually, a couple of weeks later, a bed opens up. So I get put in. To the to the mental health department at Togus and I'm fortunate that that was open at that time and I met a couple of people there that I really got along with that understood where I was but I felt I'm I'm okay now I, I felt okay at that time but I wasn't and uh, again my dad he's a really important part of my life he wouldn't let me leave they wanted to put me out within a couple days 
And he basically threw the keys on the desk and said, no, she is not coming out until you help her. This bureaucracy red tape bull is not happening anymore. So they kept me. Uh, I finally, I got proper medication and I started therapy, which was the best thing that I've ever done. So slowly I, I came out of it and uh, that was, it was quite a road. And it made me much stronger today because I developed my mission in life. My therapy became helping the vets that I met while I was on the ward. Things are fantastic for me. I'm newly married, have a wonderful husband. The kids are great. Um, my son's looking at colleges. Um, full ride for music. I'm so proud. My daughter received the Citizenship Award from the Senator. She's wonderful. My son, my youngest, fantastic. Thank you.